Hello. We want to discuss about political parties as an important actor in governance of the state. In this discussion, we want to understand the meaning of political parties, the types of political parties, the functions of political parties, as well as how political parties can be made effective so that they not only persist but also continue to discharge the functions that have been assigned to them in in state governance. I want to welcome you to this discussion. I want to urge you to take time and listen carefully. Any issue that you find inadequate or unclear, kindly note down, then raise it during our face-to-face -face lectures. Thank you and welcome. Let's begin our discussion by an understanding of what political party is. A political party is a collective entity that organizes competitions for political offices and influences government policy. Political party are also understood as the entire apparatus that include candidates, elected legislatures, and other groups or individuals who identify with a particular political party. The notion of a political party is generally defined in law and governments specify requirements for their formation and operations. We distinguish political parties from other political groups and clubs by the fact that political parties are focused on electing candidates and organizing campaigns, whereas interest groups or other groupings are focused on advancing a policy agenda only, and their mandate does not go beyond that, and therefore they do not participate directly in presenting candidates for particular political offices or electing candidates for various uh, offices. Perhaps we need also to understand that countries or states have come up with specific laws to regulate the formation and operation of political parties. These are requirements that exist in functional states and these laws are meant to be progressive, that is, they are meant to make political parties more, more vibrant and effective in discharging the mandate. However, in some countries, this is not the case. The laws, especially in dictatorial countries, are there to limit the operations and stifle political parties so that political parties do not have a fair playing field and instead it is the interest of the political party in power or the ruling political party that most of the constitutions are designed in dictatorial states are designed to advance. Let us now turn our attention to political party systems 
There are several political party systems that are found in modern state governance. One of the systems is called nonpartisan system. In a nonpartisan system, there is no official political party or parties that exist. This could be due to legal restrictions or other reasons. Uh, Nonpartisan uh, political party systems, they mainly exist in dictatorial or autocratic countries. For instance, a ban on political parties has been used as a tool for protecting the monarchy in some countries so that the royal family remains the only rulers and the formation of political parties that could challenge their foothold on power is seriously curtailed and in some cases completely banned. Political parties may also temporarily cease to exist in a newly established country or countries that are experiencing political upheavals. If, for instance, we take the case of Somalia, Somalia may not have political parties because of the fact that they are still emerging from many years of war and therefore the kind of atmosphere that exists may not permit the formation and operation of functional political parties. In that case therefore political arrangements that work are those that are organized outside the ampit of a political party. Another type of political party system is called a single dominant party. In this system, power is held entirely by one political party. Uh, there are bans or restrictions on competing parties and therefore we do not have other political parties uh, existing. It may either be they exist on paper, but in terms of actual practice and influence of government policy or state power, they may not have any say. If we look at countries such as North Korea, China, Russia, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and even Uganda, they have only one political party that controls power. This does not mean that these countries do not have other political parties. Indeed, they have, but it is only one political party that has dominated politics for as many years as most of the citizens of these countries you can remember. For instance, if you look at China, it has been the Communist Party. If you look at Tanzania, it has been CCM, that is Chama Chama Pinduzi. If you look at Zimbabwe, it has been ZANU PF. If you look at South Africa, it has been ANC. And of course, Uganda has also had only one major political player since the country emerged from the war in civil war in the mid 1980s. Uh, minor political parties are legally required to accept the leadership of the dominant political party. In these countries, they have enacted laws that ensure that minor political parties uh, submit to the authority and power of the dominant single political party. The dominant party remains through patronage and electoral fraud. If you look at what happens in some of these parties, what happens is that serious or powerful individuals in business, in the legal profession, in the academia, in politics, sometimes even the military, they're the ones that hold key positions in these parties. In that case, therefore, they use both legitimate and illegitimate means to sustain their foothold on power. Sometimes, they also organize mock elections, mock in the sense that 
the election's outcome are normally predetermined to favor the dominant political party. We have had such a case in Tanzania, in Zimbabwe, as well as in Uganda, where elections are conducted after every five years, but the outcome has always been that the dominant political party is the one that emerged uh, victorious. Another important type of political party system is what we call the two-party system. It's a type of system that is characterized by two dominant political parties. There is no chance of success for other political parties due to the dominance of the two political parties. Two party systems are common in countries where party ideologies are broad, they are distinct, and also inclusive. Some of the most notable countries that have had a two-party system is the United Kingdom and the United States. In the UK, the predominant two-party systems that have exchanged power, as far as our memory can, 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 can remember, has been the Conservative and the Labour Party. Although we have other parties that are the Liberal parties, they are there, yes, but they have not had a significant impact in terms of producing the head of state or head of government. In the United, in the United States, we have had the Democratic Party as well as the Republican Party. These two parties have dominated American politics throughout the history of that country. The same applies to other countries that we know, and therefore there are countries that it is possible to foretell which party or which two political parties would come victorious in terms of controlling majority of members of legislature or uh, becoming victorious in the election and therefore producing the head of state or the head of government, depending on how the state architecture or structures are designed in any given country. The other system is called the multiple political party system. Multi-party systems, or, or rather generally called multi-party systems, is a system in which more than two parties have a realistic chance of holding power and influencing public policy. Multi-party system is usually associated with a greater level of democracy. In many cases, parties form coalition to govern when no single party wins majority members of parliament. Therefore, in a, in a multi-party system, smaller parties may hold the balance of power, especially in a parliamentary system, since they form coalitions with larger parties to form majority of members of, of legislature and therefore form be part of the majority leader, major, ma majority leadership in the National Assembly. Political change is easier in one party system than in one party system or two party dominant systems. This is because it is easier for the many political parties to perceive issues that require change differently, to form coalition around a particular issue, mobilize the population, and to make them see sense in and appreciate the benefits that the envisaged change would bring. It is also easier for political parties uh, in a multi-party multi system to hold parties that form government accountable. Uh, in such a system, it's also not easy for the ruling party or coalition of a few parties to bring changes that could be uh, harmful to democracy, that could be harmful to the citizens. In this case, all parties must agree for any issue that requires change to be there. Therefore, if any party or a group of parties 
realize that certain changes that are being proposed are detrimental either to pursuit of human rights, provision of basic services, or advancing democracy, then they can vote out. And in that case, they may decide that they're not supporting the agenda and the process, vote against it and have it defeated. So change in multi-party system requires consensus, requires wide consultation, not only among political party members, but also between political parties and other interest groups in the society. What are the functions of political parties? One of the functions is hosting conventions. Conventions may be understood as meetings of delegates of political parties at various levels to select or endorse candidates for various political offices. Uh, conventions are also used to elect executive, com uh, executive committee members of the parties and also adopt rules governing the party. Conventions are significant also in rallying support for a party, unifying the party views and showcasing a party's leadership to a national audience. They also form a platform for, sh for showcasing party leadership and policies to prospective voters. Uh, in the West, they are largely called conventions. Most of the African countries, they are referred to as uh, national delegates conferences or national delegates meetings. They are equivalent to annual general meetings for other private or public organizations. These uh, conventions, they are normally considered as the highest decision-making organ of the party. Issues that require approval and that, that may have far-reaching consequences of the party, their approval is done at the national conventions or what in Kenya we call the National Delegates Conference. Another function of political parties is to select candidates for various offices. The function of select candidates is exercised in three main ways. These are through local committees, through national caucuses, and through voting by party members. Local committees could be at the level of the constituency, ward, or other level determined by the party constitution and rules. A national caucus refers to a congregation of party delegates selected from all corners of the country based on the party constitution and other regulations. So these delegates can also be used in some cases to select candidates. In many cases, a confirmation of a presidential candidate is normally done by a national caucus or the delegates. But we also noted that candidates can also be selected through direct voting. And voting is simply a system for, elects, for selecting candidates by means of the votes of all party members or all voters within a particular electoral area. For instance, if a particular party wants to select a candidate for a parliamentary seat in a given constituency, then it is all members of the political party in that particular constituency that will make a decision through direct voting to vote in and decide on among the many candidates that have expressed interest to represent them. They'll vote in one person and depending on the rules that have been put in place by that particular party, the winner, whether it is through simple majority 
or weighted majority, the winner will be declared as the selected candidate who will now be fronted by the party to compete for that electoral area with other candidates that have been put forward by the competing political parties. Another important function of political parties is what we call the oversight role. Oversight role simply means checking and ensuring that the party that has formed the government fulfills what it promised to citizens and also abide by all the rules and regulations governing the conduct of office bearers as well as the constitution to ensure that nothing is done outside the constitution and other regulations that have been enacted in the country. If one political party holds the executive branch of government, then another political party can check the power of the executive branch. The party that checks the one that controls the executive should control the legislature. This is because most regulations, laws including the budget, must be endorsed by the legislature. So a party that is putting the one that is in charge of government should be one that controls the legislature. In other words, it has majority members of the legislature. However, there are instances where the governing party also controls majority of members of parliament. How then does such checks and balances succeed? In some democracies like Kenya, the specific committees that deals with checking how money has been used is normally reserved for the opposition party. These are Public Accounts Committee and Public Investments Committee. These two committees are the ones that check how resources that have been allocated through the budget have been used. So to ensure that there is accountability and transparency, Parliament in Kenya has reserved the leadership of those two important committees that provide oversight to the expenditure of public resources to the opposition parties. Otherwise, in an ideal situation, a proper checks and balance is only achievable when the opposition controls legislature with a good number of members of parliament so that they are able to bring even a vote of no confidence if they feel that the, govern, the leadership of the governing party is not using the resources properly or is contravening the constitution or has committed certain offenses that in the country's laws have been declared impeachable offenses. So, oversight role is an important part uh, 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 that is being played by political parties. The other function of political parties is to organize campaigns and elections. Political parties play a key role in organizing campaigns and elections. Of course, this is addition to hosting conventions and selecting candidates to run for presidential elections. In terms of organizing campaigns and elections, political parties achieve this by popularizing their candidates through public meetings, media promotion, as well as publications. Political parties also take time to explain their policies and manifesto to the public where they highlight the issues they intend to undertake when they form government. It is expected that members of political party and its structures will rally behind the various candidates that have been selected for various offices to campaign for them, to help them fundraising, and to do other things that enhances their chances of winning. This role remains a critical role of political parties. If a political party 
does not have proper structures to organize campaigns and elections, then its chances of success in electoral contests become minimal and therefore it may not at any one time form government. So organization of campaign elections is a critical role played by political parties and depending on how they handle it, it may determine their, their success or failure in political contests. It is also the role
political party can also be effective when it has strong internal structures. Uh, these structures include the party leader, the executive committee, and party members. This structure is important in terms of making parties effective. And it's for this reason why parties must select strong leaders, strong party leader. The party leader has the primary responsibility for the activities of the party. Party executives perform the administrative and organizational tasks. Party members volunteer to help the party uh, in its activities, campaigns, and others fund the party and also vote candidates that the party has, be, has presented for various political offices. Political parties are guided in their structures and functions by the national constitution or laws, regulations, party constitutions, rules, regulations, policies, and traditions. So that if a political party, its activities must be in tandem with the aspirations of the national constitution and other applicable laws. Political parties must also have their own constitution. They must also develop rules and regulations that governs their conduct, either during elections or when they are attacking various activities. In that case, therefore, the internal function, functioning of parties such as police formulation and general decision-making processes of the political party and the involvement of members and party groups and the accountability of the party leadership are very important in the sustainability of political parties. Otherwise, if you have a party system in which there is patronage so that party leader does not respect the internal structure of the party, does not follow the constitution, does not give members opportunity to participate in major decision making the party, then that one is a recipe for disaster when it comes to political party management. So strong and effective political parties are those that have strong internal structures. They must hold regular meetings. They must abide by the rules and regulations governing the party. They must be seen to be uh, respecting the rule of law. And they must also provide opportunity for members to participate in decisions that affect the governing and operations of the party. That is the end of the discussion. I want to thank you all for taking your time and listening to me.